Good afternoon, everyone. Um, this is John Barr here with um, Chuck Dooley um, and um, Laura Dom and uh, Sheila Sloan, I think, are also here from the Commerce team. So uh, thank you all for um, um, jumping on the, the call and the webinar today. Uh, and thank you to uh, Scarlett with the WorkNet team for um, helping us uh, set the technical side of this up. And hopefully I won't fail too badly as we try to toggle through some of these documents. So Scarlett, do you have anything you want to say on the just the, the logistics side of the webinar? Uh, nope, I think everything is good. I'm going to go ahead and um, move this welcome notepad at the top to make the screen bigger. Okay. Um, and if anyone has any audio issues, you can just type in the chat and I can send the phone number through the chat at any time. Great, thanks. And so, um, yes, and if you do have any, uh, if you can't hear us, let us know, please. Um, so, so the purpose of today is to provide you with the most updated information that we have available uh, regarding the, um, the program year 2017 formula grant awards. As I think most of you know, um, you know, there's a number of new procedural requirements that will um, become fully effective. Uh, as we move to establish the um, program year um, uh, 2017 um, grants. And I guess I should also say at the outset, I want to thank um, Julie Courtney and, and the IWP folks for, for forwarding this on and, and um, you know, sending this over to your staff. And I apologize that as I realized that the note um, wasn't, um, as I forwarded, didn't include um, a, a, a complete and inclusive list of all of the fiscal folks as well. So I, I know that uh, uh, I see there's many um, directors and other staff on. So um, I, I do want to say that we anticipate that will be a um, an additional webinar um, yeah. or, or meeting that will have um, kind of the final information um, as uh, as we're ready to issue the, the funding oh, no. notice. No, I mean, I'm, I'm going to watch it from my... Uh, so, if you wouldn't mind, uh, if you could uh, mute your uh, mute your phones if you're if you're not uh, talking, but please jump in if you um, have questions. Um, so, so again, thanks for for putting this together. This is a follow up to our kind of um, ongoing um, um, technical assistance discussions around the the GATA and uh, implementation of the the uniform guidance. And so today we're going to walk through um, three or four different documents. And um, these, I want to preface this by saying that these are working documents. And the final versions of, of the documents will be, um, you know, will be issued when, we, when, when the, the notice is, is released. Um, so most of this information shouldn't necessarily be um, earth-shattering news because we've alluded to this as we've gone through some of the previous trainings. Um, I, I do want to start off by just giving everybody an update as far as the uh, allocations um, for the program year uh, $17. As, as most of you know, um, you know, Congress passed a continuing resolution for uh, the remainder of the current federal fiscal year. Um, and. Um, it's our understanding that that was um, one of the key barriers that uh, uh, was preventing the U.S. Department of Labor from um, issuing um, the uh, allotments uh, to the states for the program year 17 um, funds. Um, we have not received that allotment notice yet. Um, we are, you know, obviously eagerly awaiting that um, and. Um, part of this webinar and the materials that we're providing you here is, is in preparation of, of, of you know, processing that information and running them through the formulas that, that are uh, established to um, provide the local um, funding notice. Um, so it is, our, it is our hope that we will have the, the notice from USDOL that we'll be able to turn that around as soon as possible. Um, and if we can make the timing work, um, you know, we, we would like to establish those formula grants before June 30th of, of 2017. So we're still establishing these grants 
here within the state fiscal year 2017. Um, that is um, that would be our, our uh, best case scenario, um, but you know again we'll have to see what the timeline looks like and how things um, shake out. Um, also within the mix is you know we'll need to have um, uh, appropriation authority uh, as we get into the state fiscal year 2018, and that will be um, you know obviously a. a uh, a continued issue of importance and, and of concern uh, to, the, to the locals and, and all of our grantees and, and we'll provide you updated information as that progresses. You know, as you're probably aware, we currently don't have a, um, a state budget, but we do have funding authorization for this current state fiscal year with the workforce funds. We would need that additional authorization for state fiscal year 2018 starting on July 1st of, of, of 17 for any additional funds, any additional grants. But again, that's not the purpose of this call, but it's just to indicate there's a lot of, of, of things that have to fall into place. And our goal is to move forward with the PY $17 as quickly as possible with a goal of, of awarding these um, before the end of the current fiscal year, if that is possible. Any questions on that initial um, comment? All right. So I think with that, we'll just go ahead and, and hopefully you were able to um, receive the documents uh, that we sent late today. And, and I apologize for the, the lateness of, of when these went out. We're literally, we continue to make revisions to these um, documents and, and spreadsheets and working with our accounting office uh, in, in providing updated information, um, but wanted to give you the most current drafts that we currently have available. And so the first document that I'm going to uh, walk through are some of the different components. And if you've you know, read our notice, you'll, you'll recognize some of the information that's included here. But there are a number of components that are specific to GATA. Um, that we have um, added to the um, submission requirements. Um, so the first part, you know, just talks about our standard um, spreadsheets and the summary of, of allocations um, split between the funding streams. And um, obviously, those are not available at this time because we don't have the the the, the data from DOL yet. Um, but those will be issued as soon as they're available. Um, part B is similar to last year's notice, uh, discussing the transfer authority um, between adult and dislocated worker or vice versa. Um, the board uh, and uh, 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 the board is provided, the governor has provided that uh, you're allowed to um, have at least 50% of the PY17 funds transferred between the, the adult and dislocated funding streams without a formal approval um, request. If you request more than that amount, uh, the state has developed or in the process of developing a, a form um, for you to complete and uh, submit with your grant establishment. It's not a form that we have listed here, but it is straightforward um, and includes um, you know some of the criteria that uh, is included in the uh, in the in the law and the final regs as it relates to um, you know determining you know the appropriateness of, of a transfer of uh, between the funding streams. Um, so hopefully nothing too worth shattering there. The next section, if there aren't any questions on the transfer, is the pre-award registration. Uh, and assessment requirements. And these are some of the new requirements that are listed um, under the GATA and, and part of the GATA training. And I, again, I would point out that um, you know, some of the um, in-depth um, um, technical assistance webinars and meetings, uh, those recordings are posted at IllinoisWorkNet.com slash GATA. Uh, you can find the resources there. Um, but the, the pre-award is, is, is listed here, uh, just kind of walks through those steps, right? So every grantee in the state, they have to have a, a web address and have to have an account 
um, through uh, the, the um, grants.illinois.gov. You have to be registered. You have to go through the um, pre-qualification process. You have to go through the fiscal and administrative risk assessments uh, and complete the internal controls questionnaire on an annual basis. Um, and um, so those things should, for most of you, be familiar. And point in fact, most of you, uh, or if not all of you, have completed those steps for, um, for our current fiscal year. And, and you'll have to complete them for the next as well. Um, programmatic risk assessment is something that is, is new. And um, under the Uniform Administrative Guidance and GATA, um, a programmatic risk assessment is required. And um, the Department of Commerce has um, um, determined that we should automate this um, programmatic risk assessment. And so they have developed a survey monkey that has a number of questions um, you know, so there's several screens that, that um, you know, talk to your organization's ability to um, uh, administer the program. Um, so I would I'd say that it's generally, um, it's, it's in, the same, um, um, in the same area of the, the, the fiscal and administrative ICQ. So those are the types of questions, but it's more on the programmatic side of the house as opposed to the fiscal administration side. Um, and again, the programmatic risk assessment is generally something that you need to complete for every grant program that you are applying for. So what we have requested within the department is that we combine the WIOA grants, so your formula funds, your rapid response, and your trade funds. Um, you know, so any of those it, grants that go kind of hand in hand with the administration of the, the local program, the, the Title I-B program and trade, um, you know, we have asked to utilize one programmatic risk assessment, mm -hmm. and we've been given the approval to do that. Now, I would say if there are additional new programs, such as the, the, the SNAP EPIC program or other competitive programs, you may be required to do an additional risk assessment at the time that you come in for that type of application. We may um, be able to utilize that same risk assessment that you use for the, what we're calling the formula side to apply to you know, the other grant programs, but we're still working out the, uh, the details uh, with that. But for right now, just to reiterate, um, for your, your WIOA Program 68 grant, your Trade 66 grant, your Rapid Response 65 grant, all of those should be able to um, go under the umbrella of the one programmatic risk assessment. And yes, Pat, these steps will have to be done every year. Um, so the programmatic risk assessment is good you know, for, and actually technically the programmatic risk assessment is good for every grant that you have with us. So at next year's grant establishment for you know, all three programs that I mentioned, um, you'll have to go through that process. Um, and then finally, within this list of kind of the pre-award um, work is the indirect cost rate selection. And I know that we've had a number of detailed discussions um, about that. Um, and if you, again, have any ongoing questions or, you know, as you make that final, you and your grantee, uh, fiscal agent, make that, that final determination, if you have technical questions, um, you know, Chuck is, is, is definitely a resource. Um, to, to, to contact or, or let us know if you're still having difficulties with that. So any, any questions on the pre-award uh, side? Okay, so on the award submission side, um, 
we are um, going to be requesting um, this, the cover letter. Uh, and, and Laura, do you want to say anything to the cover letter? I think that's pretty standard from what we've uh, requested in previous years. Is that right? Uh, yes, it is. The only thing that uh, cover letter is, is standard for us from previous years. It's future modifications that there'll be a slight uh, difference. That'll be if uh, when doing a modification, our legal department wants to know uh, the justification for doing the modifications. But for the establishment that we're talking about here, it's just the standard cover letter. Okay, great. Um, and um, then the next piece is the uniform um, grants application. And we're going to go through, um, we're going to pull these up in a second. Um, so the uniform um, grant application. Scarlett, if we could um, switch to that document on the, on the screen here. I think it's this one, hopefully. What's opening up right now is the uniform um, grant application. And um, I know Laura has been working with our GATA unit folks to um, finalize this template. This is something that will be new um, now, and it is required of, of every um, grant application that, that comes in with the department, um, either on the, the formula um, and the uh, um, competitive side. And um, so, the information is pretty straightforward within it. Um, we're going to try to pre-fill um, as much of this as possible, but um, you will have to provide information on, 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 on your, um, your fiscal agent, so the applicant's uh, information, um, the applicant's uh, organizational unit, um, Laura, I think you've uh, uh, pre-filled uh, the areas effective. They let us do that, and the the term of the project. Um, I would point out that the project term of of the grants. In talking with our legal and accounting, uh, we've got uh, verification that uh, the term will go from four one of seventeen through six thirty of nineteen, and obviously the April uh, through June of 17, those are only for the, the youth funds. Um, unlike our current program year grants where we establish those just for the 24 months, we're going to go ahead and include those extra three months um, because we can um, um, you know, have that discussion now with the comptroller that you know, these are reimbursement grants and so um, you know, we are authorized to, um, you know, have that uh, term longer than, than 24 months. Um, and then estimated funding, you can just obviously put in the amount that is, um, you know, provided in the, um, in the funding notice. And then there is a, uh, a signature that is required. So I want to move now to hey John. Yes, Julie. Whose signature is that? Your uh, board chair or your CEO? So that is the authorized signature of the grantee. The grantee. Okay. Yeah. Is that right, uh, Laura and, and others? That that the grantee on this one. Yeah. And and just to back up, when we were looking at the um, steps for the um, pre-award registration, uh -huh. one through four that most of us have already completed. Yeah. What's the time frame? Is that every calendar year? Is it every fiscal year? Mm -hmm. So if we just did it, do we have to do it again before July 1st to get our WIOA funds? Right. So our understanding is that you have to do your um, your ICQ, your, your fiscal and administrative ICQ, occurs on an annual basis. Yeah, and if um, you have to do one for FY18 for any grants that be, that begin on or after July 1st, 2018. Yeah. So if you, ha if you haven't done your FY18 ICQ, then you'll have to go in and 
do that one. I think just about everybody's done their FY17 ICQ, but yeah. um, very few people have done their FY18 ICQ. Right, right. Um, so technically, we, we should be able to issue these PY17 grants without you completing your fiscal year 18, uh, without the system making us stop. Um, but once we're into FY18, any grants that are issued in FY18, they will stop. The system will automatically stop, um, and you'll have to do the FY18 um, um, ICQ. Um, my recollection is the ICQ is based on the organization's um, fiscal year. Is that right? No, it's um, or is that the or is that the interact? That's the interact. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah. you should. So they should probably update that when the fiscal year turns. Then. So, the state fiscal year. Correct. Correct. Okay. So for example, like in our county, we need to tell them to start working on the FY18 now, so it doesn't eventually hold up our our formula funds for after July 1st. That's correct. That's correct. Thank you. And, we, and we'll and we'll verify that, and we'll we'll dump it out on the FAQ. Um, but but yes, you, you know, anything. We're pretty certain that anything processed after July 1 of 17 um, will require that FY18 um, ICQ. All right. So um, Scarlett, if you can um, switch switch it to um, share my screen now. And want to move now to the uniform budget template sheet. And if you could tell me when you see that. And as that's coming up, um, I, I will tell you that this is probably the area with the most changes between um, um, you know, PY16 and, and the PY17 um, grant application. Um, as, as many of you know through our training, um, we are required to utilize um, a unified or a uniform budget um, template. And you know, this, we anticipate, is, is, is going to be complex. And we apologize at the outset for the level of, of complexity um, with it, and, and we've tried to um, you know, articulate uh, those concerns as, as much as, as, as we can. Um, recognizing the need to keep the funding streams um, and the administrative costs um, you know, segregated for the purposes of, of um, reporting and other program management. Um, so, um, we will have a number of, of, of new um, budget worksheets um, that will be required. Um, and um, I'm going to walk through the information that we have um, available at this point. Um, I will say that this is, a uh, again, a working document. And we're looking for, um, you know, um, Folks, if they're interested and available and willing to kind of volunteer to um, test this before it goes out um, with the notice, we would we would definitely appreciate that. Um, there are a number of required components that we don't have the ability to change, but there may be some things within the worksheet and the workbook that, that we can adjust. For instance, um, there are grant-specific line items that are included, um, and we have the ability to make um, some changes there. Um, however, the standard budget line items, um, we are not able to change any of those definitions or make, make those changes. Um, the, uh, indirect cost worksheets and the certification worksheets, we are not able to make those changes. Um, so um, I'm going to walk through and kind of be flipping back and forth between the, um, the submission requirements, which the intent there under 
um, under D3 here, under Uniform Budget Template, is to really highlight the major sections of this spreadsheet. And um, the first section, and hopefully um, you can see it, is the, uh, the Section 8 here, where, okay, so general instructions are included here um, as part of Section A. There's program-specific instructions, um, which we did get approval to include um, for the WIOA um, program. Um, and then jumping into Section A, this tab is, um, um, this tab is filled um, using the worksheets in, within, the, um, within the workbook. So um, you'll see that the personnel line item is broken out by the funding streams and administrative, so we'll have, for personnel, we'll include them under uh, admin, youth in school, youth out of school, adult and dislocated worker. And you'll utilize the tabs within the workbook to um, include those costs, and those will calculate back here on Section A. So, Again, I understand that it's difficult to, you know, probably grab all this without, you know, going in and kind of playing with it. But you'll see, you know, once uh, once you're able to, to 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 grab this, you'll see what fields you can enter information in and and what fields you're not. So, continuing on through Section A is the indirect cost um, rates information. This is the place where um, you, know, you should note which indirect cost rate your, um, the grantee is, is selecting, and, and this should be consistent with what you have um, you know, selected in the, in the, in the CARS uh, system with uh, OMB. Um, section A, moving on to the indirect cost worksheet. Um, this actually is is a kind of shows a crosswalk between um, the grant line items that are listed under this section. So these are all the GATA lines, and it's included in the GATA order, right? So you'll see that we have broken out personnel, fringe benefits, because those are specific GATA lines and we are required per our accounting office and GATA and OMB to break it out this way. Then we move down to line 15 and you'll see many of these familiar line items um, where they're broken out, admin, other, youth, in school, out of school. Um, and, and so these program line items are essentially the same um, as um, last year's um, program lines. Does that make sense? Also, a new line item for this year is the indirect cost, and that's something that will, um, you know, if, if you have indirect um, charges, that will need to be included. Any of the line, any of these line items that are grayed are not allowed or are not. Um, you know, provided in this particular grant. So any of these, any travel costs, you would need to record those like you have in previous years. Um, so if it was travel costs for, um, you know, for the adult program, you most likely would be charging that to line um, 15D1, right? So 15 adult other program costs if you had, um, you know, travel costs there. There is a section that we have uh, and we will um, include that will have the specific budget line item definitions, um, just like we did for program year um, 16. So, um, Laura, do you want to say anything or, or, or anybody else, anything about those definitions? 
Those definitions can be found on the Program Specific Instructions tab. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. thank you. So let me just, um, so you can see in Section D, grant specific line items. Um, and if you see anything as, as, as you look through this draft, uh, anything in areas of concern, if you could, you know, please, please let us know and, and we'll, we'll try to address those. Okay. So then looking at this Section A, and this, this may be, this is a new worksheet. And Chuck developed this um, and uh, um, as a result of, um, uh, you know, talking with our accounting offices, um, you know, one of the concerns that they had is, is, you know, the specific functions and activities need to fall under the GATA line items. And our concern was that if you did that, then for each one of these line items, you'd have to have, you know, five sublines. So for instance, go back to that travel. If we, if we broke it out that way, we would have to have five travel lines uh, for each of the funding streams. Um, you know, they, they, would not, um, they would not yield as far as um, personnel and, and, um, and fringe benefits in breaking out the, the funding streams. But we were able to um, agree to allow um, the, the standard um, budget lines that we've been using uh, for WIOA formula um, to be broken out, as long as we can have this indirect cost rate um, worksheet, so especially for those entities that are charging the de minimis rate, um, you know, we, can, we can see you know, what that calculation will look like, and we can see um, that the appropriate cost that are excluded, um, you know, are excluded. Um, so, um, Chuck, I don't know if you can um, maybe um, uh, give a summary of, of, of this sheet and, and, and provide more detail there. Yeah, like John was saying earlier, um, if, you, if you go to Section A, um, um, oh, go ahead. Just tell me where you want it to move. Um, section A. Oh, Section A. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, if you go to Section A, this is the um, the grant budget template with all the um, budget line items. And if you scroll down, um, you have the grayed out line items <clears throat> that John was talking about earlier. So those are required GATA line items in the uniform budget template, um, which we were allowed to omit from the from the WIOA budget and from GRS, because otherwise we were going to have to add 40 to 50 line items to GRS and your grant budgets. So in lieu of including them in the grant budget, we have them in the um, indirect worksheet, the Section A indirect worksheet. You want me to focus on that? Yeah. So if you look at the um, other admin line and the other program line, in this worksheet, um, that's a roll-up line item. And then below that are the sub-roll-up line items for travel, equipment, supplies, and so on. So this worksheet is used to capture the information that is not otherwise going to be included in the, in the budget. Um, so you'd include the total costs for the breakdown for all these categories, including the sub-roll-up line items for other admin and other program costs for each funding stream. And then the other purpose of the spreadsheet or worksheet is to show the calculation of the, the indirect. Um, so, and hopefully it's pretty self-explanatory. So you put the total amount in column F for each line item, and then you put the, um, the deductions for the direct cost base in column G, and then that'll calculate the direct cost base in column H and then you enter the in, your indirect cost rate at the top of the spreadsheet, and then the spreadsheet will automatically cal calculate the indirect line item for each, for admin and each funding stream using the indirect rate and the direct cost base in column H. Um, this spreadsheet, the information on the spreadsheet isn't included in the budget or in GRS, 
Um, but the main purpose is to capture information that isn't otherwise included in the other spreadsheets and to verify the calculation of the indirect line items um, that you entered on the budget template on Section A. Questions on this? I can't, I can't see anything in the chat pod. So, Scarlett, I don't know if you can um, relay those questions to us or if anybody wants to use the phone with questions. So if there are no questions, again, I think that, um, you know, I think as you, yeah. go ahead. I think as, as you review these worksheets um, and, and questions come up, um, you know, please uh, follow back with us. Um, again, especially around this indirect worksheet, um, you know, this is, uh, you know, one of the concerns that our accounting office has is that under GATA, um, you know, the agency is required to verify the information provided in the budget and also verify that your indirect cost, um, the application of that cost is, is correct. And, um, you know, so this is, this is hopefully satisfying that requirement. And if, if you see something that um, it doesn't make sense, um, or needs further clarification, please let us know. And um, John, I just wanted to mention one other thing. Um, so a lot of this information you provided in prior years in the master budget, mm -hmm. which we no longer have. So that's one thing I want to point out. Yep. There's no longer a master budget. Um, and also, if, for example, you're charging less than your approved indirect rate, you know, you should um, put the actual indirect rate to be used at the top of the worksheet. And then there's a, um, there's a comments field at the bottom of this worksheet um, where you, would, you can enter um, comments or notes um, regarding the calculation of the, of the indirect line items. Okay. So if there's no questions, we'll, we'll then move to the um, non-state match. So I know that in previous workshops we've talked about the ability to, um, you know, include if, if um, you know, if your grantee uh, is, is not going to apply their full uh, indirect or if there's other match involved, the utilization of, of, of that match as, as stand-in costs. Um, so we did, as, as a change from previous years, we're looking at adding that as part of, of the budget on a voluntary basis, if you wanted to include that. Um, part C is with the um, budget narrative summary, and um, that's all the way at the, the um, end of the workbook here, and it looks like this. And at this point, um, the budget lines um, don't automatically calculate. Is that right, uh, Laura? If, if you know, on, on Section C, on the budget worksheet and narrative, uh -huh. those budget lines do not automatically calculate. Is that right? They do. Oh, they do calculate? They do. They come over from the spreadsheet. Okay, good. All right, well, then, then that, that is good. Yeah, okay. I can do it that way. Okay, excellent, excellent. So this... Chuck? Can you see the chat pod stuff question? Oh. You can't? Um, well, Maria was asking, she said the cell to enter the indirect cost rate is a locked cell. Are they supposed to enter that amount in there when they get their direct cost rate? Yeah, that's, um, yeah, they'll have to enter the indirect rate that they plan to use in the cell at the top, and then they'll have to enter the cost, the total cost in, in column F, and then the direct cost base exclusions in column G. Okay. So that may be just a formatting thing that we'll have to um, connect back, and we'll make a note to make sure that that is a, um, a cell that is um, unlocked. So. Yeah, they, we'll write a note here. Great. So thank you. That opens up. Okay. Great. Great. 
So the budget narrative summary, um, you know, we hope that that will continue to calculate automatically. Um, the next part is um, part D here. Um, if I can get to it. Part D is the WIOA program funding. And so for most of you, this, this will be familiar. Um, it's it's our, the forms that we've utilized in previous years. Um, it is um, used to control the first quarter uh, limitation, and um, that's the reason for, for this uh, sheet, and, and we'll utilize this as we load the information into uh, GRS and put those system limits um, on, on the budget line items. Sheila, do you got any, any, any up, any, anything to add there? Uh, I don't think I do at this point. Okay. All right, just making sure. Okay. <laughs> um, then on um, um, next spreadsheet on the um, uh, on section D here is the WIOA uh, program cumulative registrants again, <laughs> similar to what. Um, you have, uh, the locals have provided uh, in, in, in previous years. Um, now, all of these spreadsheets, um, all these extra tabs here, this is where the narrative for each of the budget line items is, is included. Um, so this is where the information is, is loaded and it will automatically um, or it should automatically calculate on both the narrative summary sheets and this section A sheet here. It should automatically, um, you know, calculate there. Um, some other things that are required in the spreadsheet um, is the certification tab, and uh, they ask that your uh, fiscal officer. Uh, sign this as well as your um, your your authorized signature. Um, finally, um, on this is the um, um, Federal Funds Accountability and Transparency Act um, certification. Um, this is um, you know, something that is also uh, required. So, any any questions on on that? any of the forms here. So hopefully I can um, stop sharing now. And I'm going to see if this actually works, right? Did it work? OK. So are you all seeing the, um, the Word document now? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. So, um, so that's the, you know, I guess that's, that's the major document that we have. The last document that is, is posted here is the um, Uniform um, Grant Agreement. And I'm not going to go through that in detail. Um, the intent there is if you wanted to share that document um, with your legal and, and management team um, to review those terms. Um, there hasn't been any significant changes since the last time we talked um, in March and in February as far as you know, what's included in the, um, in the grant agreement. Many of the same provisions, um, you know, but listed in different areas. Um, I would point out that some of the attachments within the grant agreement um, will have some new information as it relates to the, um, the fiscal, um, the, the, the ICQ, uh, and the programmatic risk assessment. Um, so this is, again, a new GATA requirement um, that based on the, um, the risk that is identified through those two automated processes, there may be some 
additional conditions that are included within your grant agreement, and those conditions could include, um, you know, additional reporting or, or other um, activity. But we will work with you on an individual basis uh, as those conditions spit out. I know that for especially the WIOA grants, uh, there's a whole lot of reporting and accountability already built in. So it's, it's one of those, um, you know, if your risk score is too high, then you have to provide monthly monitoring and, and, and monthly uh, reporting. Well, you already report every month. So, um, you know, again, we're working on some of the distinctions between formula grantees and competitive grantees within um, the department. And, um, you know, like, as I said, we're working through those details. Um, there may be some, um, some of the requirements around uh, or attachments around uh, performance is a separate attachment. And certainly we're going to um, reference the WIOA performance measures and, and those negotiated performance measures and you know, meeting the standards established through that process. Um, so the bottom line is that a lot of the information that is included in the PY16 um, grant agreements will definitely be included in the 17. They may be in different locations but in and, and presented in a different way. Um, and we'll also obviously have all of the terms and conditions associated with the federal award, which are typically um, included in part 4.4 of the current agreement. Any questions about that? All right. Well, um, that's the information that, that we have uh, prepared today. Um, I guess we'd open up the floor to any other, um, you know, technical questions or um, uh, um, concerns at this point. Hey, John, this is Julie again. When we, uh, you're looking at the programmatic um, risk assessment, should we go in and start doing that now? So, Laura, do you know if that is live? I do not know if Megan has it live yet, no. Okay, so let, let's, we'll follow up with you on that, and we'll send a follow-up note once we verify that it's live. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, any other questions? Well, again, thank you, um, Julie and, 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 and others. And, and John, there's our, people still typing. So oh, I'm sorry. Apologize. But thank, I, you for, thank you for doing this. Yeah. Yes, well, thanks for pulling it together. Ready? Can you see the questions now, John? I can, yes. Okay. I've been answering a couple of them. Okay. They've been up there, Laura and I. <laughs> okay. Will we be getting a copy of the PY formula grant establishment? Are you are you thinking of um, like the grant a grant agreement? Okay, so yes, at the at the time that um, so we need you need to do all the pre um, you know you need to be registered and, and go through all that right. Um, you need to have your programmatic and your ICQ completed. Um, then you need to submit um, your budget template. Um, actually, I'm going to walk right through here, right? Um, so take a look at, um, you know, um, submit your cover letter, your, your, uh, the uniform grant application and the uniform budget template, right? So those are the things that we will need to um, establish the grant. We'll go through our normal process. Um, we will um, then work with our legal office to package the grant and then send it out to you in complete form. Um, what I have posted and sent out 
for this webinar is just the blank um, PY17, or I'm sorry, state fiscal year 17 um, grants boilerplate. We will plug in all of the applicable WIOA provisions and also your specific um, you know, requirements for your grant, as I refer to in those uh, risk assessment pieces. So the answer is yes. We will send that back out to you. And our goal is to have those grants out to you and returned and obligated by June 30th of 17, pending our ability to get the uh, allocations out and the notice out. Um, so there's a lot of things that have to fall into place, but we are still, um, that would be our plan A, is to get these things processed before 6.30. Uh, 24 hours. <laughs> um, how long do we have? Well, again, I, I think um, you know, our our our, um, our our goal through this is to because we identify these are from some pretty significant changes, and we're hopeful that this will start the process of becoming familiar with you know what's required in these tabs, and uh, you know if you see something that isn't working or there's a locked cell. Um, you know, let us know, and we'll, um, we'll we'll get those updated before they're formally released. But we recognize that it's coming into crunch time here, um, and um, you know, we hope to provide as much time as as, as possible. And thank you, uh, Laura, for the public comment because this is a this is a grant establishment. It is not a plan modification. Hey, John, this is Julie again. Sorry. No problem. I'm quiet after this. Um, I heard Chuck mention something when we were talking about when uh, you apply for your indirect cost rate. Mm -hmm. So is, we're using the, the, the risk assessment stuff on the state fiscal year, but is the indirect cost rate on the grantees fiscal year? Yes. Okay. Here's my question. They don't match. They don't match. So our county's fiscal year starts December 1st, so if they decide after December 1st to do an indirect cost rate, how, I, I know you probably don't even answer right now, but how do we do all this then? How do you reconcile it because it'll be halfway through our program year? Just a thought that came oh. to my head. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Well, right now it's zero, but if they decide in December that they're gonna do something different, right. everything right. we filled out is based on the current, or right. do we wait and just catch up the next year? Just a question. If you get an answer, let me know. Well, if, if you go to the grantee portal, and in order to do that, you'll have to set up a user ID and password. Um, but if you go to the grantee portal, it'll show <clears throat> all the information for the GATA registration, <clears throat> including the, um, the cost rate election. And most, a lot of grantees have done their cost rate elections for FY17. Um, so they should do one for FY18 also, especially if the indirect indirect rate election is going to change because that will have to be entered into the grant agreement and reviewed and approved by um, the state's indirect cost rate vendor. Mm -hmm. Right, but if they're basing it on their fiscal year, they may not be doing that until September or October or whatever it is to be in line for their December. So that's all I'm just wondering. If for something changes mid-year on us, yeah. do we have to change the forms for our PY17 mm -hmm. or do we catch up next year as of July 1st of 18, yeah. and then put in the indirect cost rate? Well, right, it's a good question, and we've had some initial discussions with, with our accounting office on that. Um, one potential option is to do a grant modification, but um, we will get back to you on a complete answer to that because we're still, um, we still need to verify if that is, um, if that is the directive. Okay, thanks. No problem. So, um, Dan, let's see, C1, um, one, 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 one through three. Yeah, those are for the, um, the GATA pre-award requirements. Yeah. One thing I should mention is that if the authentic, 
Authentica authentication is done once. Yep. So once you set up your user ID and password for the grantee portal, it's done. The purpose of doing that is to verify the relationship between the user and the, um, the organization or the grantee. So you do that once and you're done. As far as grantee registration and pre-qualification, if, if you've already registered and been pre-qualified, then you don't necessarily have to do that again. Right. <clears throat> once you set up your, your access to the grantee portal, you should go into the grantee portal and look at your pre-qualification status. And that will tell you whether or not you're in good standing with all the pre-qualification requirements. Um, for example, if your SAM registration expires on May 20th, you know, you could be out of compliance on May 21st because the um, the pre the the pre-qualification registration items are checked nightly and they're updated nightly. Um, so you don't necessarily have to register register again if all those items are in good standing. Right. Right. We and, and, and we probably recognize that we probably did a little overkill on one through three, but especially for this first year, we wanted to make sure we documented the, the process. So um, that's a good point. And probably in subsequent years, we won't include um, you know, all those points. Yeah, and one more thing I want to mention is that the, um, the Secretary of State good standing um, has been automated. So one of the things that they're requiring this year is that you have to go in and enter your um, entity type. So if you're um, a county government, for example, Secretary of State good standing would not even apply. Um, if you're a nonprofit, however, um, it'll ask you for your Secretary of State file number, which is on the Secretary of State website. Um, so you enter your entity type and your Secretary of State file number, and that will automate the, um, that will allow the GATA system to automatically um, check Secretary of State good standing. Um, and if there are any issues the following day, um, it should show that the status for that item is good. Did you guys address um, Carmi's question about the pre-award and registration and assessment? Yeah, the um, yeah, yeah, the um, the registration and the and the fiscal ICQ are at the um, the organization level. Um, so if you're, if you're with the county, the county may have done consolidated registration for multiple departments and programs, so the county would probably do the grantee registration and fiscal ICQ. Right. On the other hand, the programmatic ICQ, that's going to be included with the, um, with the grant establishment documents, um, that'll probably be done by the, by the department. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I... I take that back. It's going to be on on the um, on Survey Monkey, and you'll have to complete the survey online. Right. That's right. Okay. Other other questions in the chat or or on the phone? Okay. Well, uh, uh, we got one more uh, typing. And it looks like maybe maybe not. So, um, so I, I think unless there's any other questions, we'll go ahead and, and wrap it up for uh, for today. Um, so that's great. So, will the new reporting system be the same as e-grants reporting? Um, we do not know that yet. Um, there are some things that are being worked out. We are trying to um, make connections between. Um, the, you know, what is currently reported in GRS. Um, you know, we requested those additional budget lines. You'll note that we broke out the, the, uh, the personnel and the benefits. Um, there'll be additional indirect lines that will be included um, in, in GRS to report. 
Um, so, so there will be changes there as well. And I think that's a great segue as, into the, um, you know, I anticipate that we'll have another, um, you know, opportunity for webinar and, and uh, uh, to, to kind of walk through, um, you know, when we have the final notice ready. Um, we'll provide the, obviously the, the, um, the updated documents and we'll be happy to, to walk through those uh, again and also should have some more information regarding the, um, the additional reporting uh, requirements both on the, um, on the programmatic reporting side, uh, also from the uh, 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 grantee uh, side to uh, comply with Commerce's uh, requirements, and then also um, on the uh, uh, GRS fiscal side. So, okay. Um, so with that, um, I think we'll go ahead and um, close up the, the, the call and, and thank you all again. Thanks, Chuck and, and, and uh, Laura and Sheila and uh, Scarlett for your um, work on all of this. And um, please let us know if you have questions and concerns and uh, we'll be talking with all of you soon.